This is the GTN Show, welcome back. Now, we thought it was about time that we acknowledged this rather large cycling event that has been going on for the last couple of weeks, and with the climax of the 100th Tour de France just a few days away, we thought it was about time we sort of took a look at what we as triathletes could learn from the pro cyclists. Yeah, we're also going to be discussing the effects of these heat waves that keep hitting the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. There's a race that is no longer, there's a new event that's coming up. We're also going to be sharing a colourful array of your pictures, much more, all of this coming up in this week's show. Right, before we kick anything off this week, we thought we'd have a little bit of a recap on our ASOS giveaway that we chatted about last week. So we have the Miele GT NS jersey for the men. And for the women, we've got the Uma GTNS jersey here. And the giveaway is actually still open for another week, so you can find the link to that in the description just below this video. But last week, the wrong screenshot actually came up on screen at the time, so hopefully the new one and the correct one is coming up right now. But I believe someone owes us a slight yeah, apology Yeah, I mean, for that. it wasn't our mistake. I mean, we don't want to say that we're perfect or anything, but uh, Adam, um, yes. Yeah, sorry guys. Yeah, well, one more of them and you are out of here. But please don't forget to enter into that. The giveaway is still open for another week. Yeah, perfect for summer riding. Right, given the biggest cycling race of the year is currently well underway, it would be absolutely criminal for us to not give it a slight mention. And with just a few days to go and that time gap between the leading few riders becoming increasingly smaller, it is gonna be a very exciting end to this year's tour. Anything could happen. And what those athletes do day in, day out is, well, absolutely fascinating and incredible. They've got 21 stages in total, and each day they blow our minds with the well, performances that they're able to produce. So could we, as triathletes, learn a thing or two from the tour and these pro cyclists? Well, obviously, it is very different in the first place. They don't have to run straight off the bike, but then you could flip that around and say they perform at the very top level day after day, well, for 21 days in this case, which is something, you know, unfathomable for triathletes. But then they've got this support network, which we don't see, or we're not allowed in triathlon, when, you know, there's there's a, a team to start with, and one athlete is nominated to be the athlete that the whole team are there to get over that finish line first. You've got the communication of the radios, the support cars, you know, the whole team effort as soon as they finish the race. They don't have to do anything. And, you know, if an athlete has a puncture, it's just a few seconds for them to have their wheel changed, put back up, you know, given a little push even. And then we saw Iron Man Frankfurt with Paul Patrick Langer and his home nation. There so many people wanting to help him, struggling with that puncture and nothing he could do. You know, it's it's such a contrast. Yeah, even a fellow athlete or an athlete from the same nation giving you their will to replace yours, say you got a puncture during a race, could put both of you at risk of getting a disqualification in a lot of formats of racing. And I mean, if we take, for example, Alistair mm -hmm. helping Johnny Brownie, his younger brother, over the finish line at Cozumel, that was, well, very heavily debated as to whether Johnny should be disqualified. But actually, by including this kind of team element into the racing and the external support, could it actually make the racing more interesting and exciting? Yeah. And then, I mean, adding that communication factor, imagine in long distance racing when, you know, the athletes sometimes are so spread out, you don't know who's where. But say, you know, in Kona, if Sebastian Keeney, he comes out the water behind Jan and he knew how much he had to catch, or Jan Fredino was getting, you know, um, numbers in his ears of how quickly Sebi was catching him and would that change the whole format? Would we see athletes giving more early on and changing the whole racing format? Oh, together? definitely, a lot more tactics at play then. Or we can totally revise the whole format and style of racing um, and race in teams. So a little bit like the French Grand Prix triathlon series and the Bundesliga triathlon series that Fraser and myself compete in. That is really exciting. You race in a team and in some cases, almost like the Tour de France style of racing, you would focus all your attention on one athlete almost in a domestic kind of fashion. Yeah. And then the whole endurance side of it and the fact that, you know, the Tour de France, you really get to learn about the riders and you can get to follow this over weeks. I mean, I'm not saying weeks, but triathlon starting to kind of have events that, say the Super League, which is over multiple days. Um, you've also got, we recently saw a semi-final in the World Cup. So, you know, multiple day racing, that would then change the type of athlete, but also the viewer's experience. You get to know the athletes a little bit more. And also maybe we could learn from cyclists how they recover, because they literally get off the bike and that is it. It, isn't it? I think we've posed quite a lot of questions for you guys out there, but I, I guess in summary, we find 
the cycling side, absolutely fascinating. They are at the absolute pinnacle um, and they do do it very well. So I feel like we should be able to take something from them. So we are going to throw you the question now. Should triathlon allow athlete assistance? Yeah, we've got a few options for you here because it is a vast topic. So first one, yes, just from your teammates. So in that team role, yes, from an external support team. So having a support car or someone on the side, only in the case of an emergency only from race officials, or finally, no, not at all, not from anyone, whatever the situation. Well, do let us know your thoughts by voting in the poll just up here. Yeah, now on to last week's poll where we asked you, what makes you fitter? And this is between swimming, cycling, and running, and we put other in there as yeah, well. Yeah, we did. Well, um, just 7% of you said other, there were things like rowing and other country sports and stuff like that came in there. Cycling, just 13%, which I thought would be higher than swimming, but swimming then, 24%. And the Antonite winner, which I would agree with, and I bet you would as well, yeah. Mark, running got 56% sparked a big debate as yeah. we expected so we had a couple of standout comments coming in andrea miller said i don't know about a stronger heart but what about a stronger brain definitely something <laughs> up with cyclists uh, just look at their ridiculous socks i like that but then we like socks but yeah, yeah i mean anyway <laughs> good, good joke though um Faisal ghani said swimming makes me want to eat more and <laughs> um, which is Quite a common... Um, yeah, I mean, it makes thing. you stronger. Whether it makes you fitter, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, fantastic. Do make sure you get involved in that poll. Well, those of you in the Northern Hemisphere will have experienced some heat, I reckon, at some point. It seems as though New York has experienced it pretty badly over the last few days. So much so that the New York Triathlon, which was about to change, it was in the final year, the last chance to get the record, had to be cancelled quite a few days beforehand. The mayor of New York, along with the organisers, just they decided that it wasn't safe to be able to put on this event. They had 4,000 athletes who sadly weren't allowed to compete. They did get their money given back to them. And also, they got their finishers t-shirts, which I guess has a slightly different from meaning to it and their medals to take home and there was still the expo there so you know that was obviously already set up and they tried to embrace it but safety had to come first sadly. Yeah and even though the event was actually cancelled the aid stations were still set up on the 10k run course so for those New Yorkers that were suffering in the heat they were still able to make use of the 1,900 gallons of water oh. and Gatorade throughout that course so if you're just wandering through yeah. the town. What's that in yourself. I don't test me on that one, Heather, <laughs> a lot but of water. that is a lot of water in <laughs> Gatorade. Right, so an athlete that is causing quite a buzz this year is the young British athlete Alex Yee. Now, he's only 21 years old, but this year he won Cape Town World Cup. He came second in WTS Abu Dhabi. He also won the mixed relay in Nottingham, all whilst juggling his multi-sport ambitions with track running. Now, last year, he actually became the British senior 10K champion running an astonishing 27.51 for 10K. And just this weekend, he took part in the 5K and the anniversary games at the London Olympic venue. And wait for it, he posted a five second PB of 13.29. Yeah, and we did the maths earlier, that equates to two minutes, 42 seconds per kilometre. That is astonishing, isn't it? And now he, he actually only placed 12, I say only, I mean the winning time was 13.01, so it was it was a fairly fast race, yeah. but I think we should keep an eye out for this Yeah, guy. you wouldn't want him chasing you off the bike, that's for sure. And less positive news, there's an event in Wisconsin which is coming up to its 40th year, but sadly it is going to be the final year for the triathlon in Warsaw. And the organisers have put this down to the fact that the participants have just dwindled. They used to have about 400 athletes and now sadly getting half of that. And they think it's due to partly the fact that athletes want the bigger challenge of triathlon, like always getting further, longer, harder, so Ironman for example, or maybe extreme triathlon. So the positive part of this story, they are actually going to replace it with another event. They're calling it triathlon. I mean, it's a little bit um, tenuous here, but this event is going to involve kayaking through Wasal's downtown Whitewater course, then running the trails of Rib Mountain State Park and cycling single track, um, track paths along the nine mile county forest recreation area. I mean, it sounds amazing, but you know, it is a little bit of a, a loose bracket for triathlon, but still great that they're you know, continuing with something there. Definitely. They've turned that around into something quite exciting. Yeah. One slightly more positive news, we had the inaugural LA Legacy Triathlon this weekend 
in Long Beach, California. Now, Long Beach in California is actually the proposed location for the 2028 Olympic and Paralympic Games in Los Angeles. Um, and the idea of this event is that it will be held annually every year in the lead up to those 2028 Games. And this is quite interesting because actually legacy events normally take place after the yeah. Olympic Games, but the national governing body, USA um, Triathlon, are actually trying to build this legacy in the lead up to the Games. So it will be taking place every year. It's brought a new event to Southern California and also the birthplace for triathlon. Yeah, it's great and so far ahead of the Games as well. So hopefully, you know, it's going to just get more people into the sport and the crowds by 2028 should be amazing. And also a very slick event. Nice. Well, to finish off Try News, we've actually got the announcement of the end of her career for the incredible pro triathlete Marino Van Hoonacker, who had a total of 17 Ironman victories to his name. And his career span, I don't know how many years, but one of those athletes that's just what would always race, you know, from the gun to the absolute end. And he got so close so many times to winning Kona, didn't quite manage it, but still a very iconic name in our sport for sure. Yeah, I mean, the guy has achieved almost everything in the sport, bar, I guess, that one. One elusive, elusive result yeah. that I guess kept him in the sport for so long, and that was the Ironman World Championships. And we saw him one year get so close, he had such a big lead going on to that run, and he just crumbled. And it was devastating actually seeing him on the side of the road on a curb and having to be whizzed off to hospital and to the um, first aid tent and stuff. Uh, but he did put out a message said, The end, as of today, I end my competitive triathlon career. Big thanks to family, friends, sponsors, race organized, fellow athletes volunteers, special thanks to his, uh, to Top Sport Belgium Defence because he was actually part of the Belgian army. Um, yeah, Tadelka, thank you so much for support. We are a badass sporty family. Love you. Uh, yeah, absolutely incredible athlete. I had the pleasure of actually training with him, racing with him a couple of times and being absolutely smashed by him. So uh, big hats off to you and an incredible career. Yeah. Well now for some race news and we're going to kick things off with a couple of Xterra results. The first of which, Xterra Beaver Creek. In the men's race it was Sam Osborne, Brad Zola and Braden Rakita that led the men's swim out with about a minute advantage over their closest rivals. Now, Beaver Creek is a pretty unusual race in that it starts at altitude around 7,400 feet. It then continues to climb around 3,000 feet or more, topping out at 9,400 feet. So this race is all about pacing. Now, Osborne and Rakita actually pulled away from Zola pretty early on in the bike, but it was a Zion middle that came charging through and actually caught up with those leaders within about three miles of the race on the first climb, and then just continued to go full throttle, posted the fastest bike split of the day, and continued that form throughout the run to take the win in front of a home crowd and also crossing the finish line with his daughter, hand in hand. Second place was Sam Osborne, and then third place was Carsten Madsen. Well, on the women's side, it was actually a newcomer to Xterra, Michelle Mayner, who led out of the swim. She had a minute on the rest of the field, but that didn't last very long. And soon the seasoned pros, such as Susie Snyder and Julie Baker, caught up with her. It's actually Snyder who, by the top of that first, for the grueling climb, had a 47 second advantage. She opened that up so that by the time of the start of the run, she had two minutes. And she didn't look back. She actually won the overall event by two minutes. That was a USA victory again. And then it was Julie Baker, two minutes back, in second place. And it was a clean sweep for the USA because third place went to Maya Ignaz, also of the USA. Well, we also had Xterra Italy, and in the men's race, it was Maxim Shane that led the swim out with Ruben Rizafa and Doug Hall about 30 seconds back. Onto the bike, Rizafa really took the charge, and by the second time through the lovely village of Skarno, he had taken that lead just as they start to head up the rather infamous and gruelling drag to the ski station. Rizafa started the run in very strong position and very strong pace, but it was Xavier Deflon that was chipping away at that gap with every kilometer, and by five kilometers in, that gap was down to just 60 seconds. But fortunately, Rizafa responded and managed to take the win with about a 57 second advantage. And then second place went to Xavier Deflon and third to Philippa Barrett-Zoom. Cool. Well, on the women's side, it was Maria Kaeya who led out of the swim again, a 48 second gap. And it was a quite a spread out exit from the swim because then another 15 seconds back to third place and then a further minute to the rest of the pack. But it didn't take that long for Helena Kereskova to make the move and start to close that gap with some of the pack. But she ended up having an advantage of three minutes by the time she came into T2. She opened that lead up by a further two minutes to take the overall win by five minutes in a time of three 
3.24. And then on home soil, it was a silver medal for Sandra Mehoffer in a 3.29. And Eva Garcia Gonzalez from Spain, she was the defending champion from last year, managed to get on the podium in third. Well, moving over to some IT racing, we had WTS Edmonton this weekend, and it was Von Saint Louis that really pushed the pace very early on in the swim. And joined with him, we had Martin Van Riel, we had Matt Hauser, Johnny Brownlee, uh, Ben Knute, all on his heels. Now, being strong cyclists, those guys managed to actually establish a good breakaway quite quickly on, and that was about 20 seconds by the end of lap one on the bike. But fortunately, the chase group managed to organize themselves quite quickly, and that included the of Mario Mola and Javier Gomez. So they managed to minimize that gap if in fact they actually managed to bring it back ever so slightly. Although they did run into some issues as they went into the final lap, actually coming into transition down a little bit of a hill to the line. As they were taking their feet out of their shoes, we actually had a crash between Ronaldo Carlucci and Stefan Zakhaus. And that actually caused a bit of a pile up, which include Javier Gomez and Heli Geens. They were out of the race from there on. But back to the run, it was actually Matt Hauser that really stormed out of transition and took the lead very early on. He faded a bit after the first kilometre and then it was over to Johnny Brownlee who looked really in control and very strong. He went on to take the win. Second place went to the very fast moving Mario Mola who came from that chase pack and then third place went to Martin Van Riel. Well, on the women's side, they were missing the WTS series leader, Katie Zafares, but her teammate was there to certainly put her um, impression on the race. So Summer Rappaport came out of the swim first. Just a small group, including Great Britain, Sophie Coldwell, Taylor Spivey in that group. But then there was a chase pack, and after one lap of the bike, the chasing group had caught, and that then meant there was a group of 20 girls coming into T2, and it was going to be a race for the quick runners in the field. And it was great to see return of an athlete, Emma Jackson, who has been out with injuries over the last two years. And she managed to sneak in initially behind her teammate, Ashley Gentle, who set the pace on the run. But it was Emma Jackson who came through with the strongest run of the day to actually take the win ahead of Summer Rappaport of USA in second. And then Ashley Gentle back on the podium for third. Yeah, well, we also had on the same weekend, we had the mixed team relay over in Edmonton. And this is always very exciting to watch. But very quickly, we'll just sum up the results. The winners were Team New Zealand, second was Great Britain, and third was the United States. Well now for our final race results, and that comes from Ironman Switzerland. And this was actually the final Ironman event to take place from Zurich, as it now moves on to Tun next year, which is obviously sad times for Zurich, but exciting times for Ironman Switzerland going forward. This was also a men's only pro race with a women's only pro race taking place in Tallinn and Estonia in just a couple of weeks time. Now it actually became a non wetsuit swim with the water temperatures in Lake Zurich reaching quite high levels. Um, and it was Jan van Berkel from Switzerland that really tried to stamp his mic very early on and showing that it was really after that win. He posted a 51, 38 in the swim, leading into T2, T1 even, uh, with Christian Kramer hot on his heels, Sven Riedra and really wild. Yeah, but there were several changes when it came to the bike leg, and it was Ivan Rania who had the lead for the majority of the second half of the bike, but um, Van Berkel, I think, wanted to make his impression coming into T2. So for the final 10K of the bike, he got back into the lead, never really going outside of third place. And then out onto the run, he was joined by Sven Riederer for the first 10K. Those two ran together, but Jan Van Berkel obviously firmly had his sights set on the win as he started to increase that lead quite comfortably, ran a 2.46 marathon to take the overall win in front of a home crowd. Sven Riederer was second, and then in third place, it was Cyril Vino. It's now time for the caption competition. And we had this picture last week from Brian Fogarty, sat chilling out on the finish line at Ironman Bolton. Well deserved. Yep, well, there's some good um, caption suggestions to go with it. This first one, certainly noting the compression socks. Jack Green seems rather envious here. He's like, smiling, because I can wear compression socks as high as I want, because I'm not a cyclist. Those damn UCI guys. <laughs> a little chip on the shoulder there. <laughs> Another one from Dom Lewis said, uh, this is the life of Brian. Fogarty. <laughs> <laughs> and our final runner-up comes from Ross Fletcher, so it whispers through teeth, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get up. <laughs> Very good. But our winner goes to Benjamin LGD, look it, I don't know how you say that. Um, when you look at your face at picture featuring your 80 years older self crossing the Ironman Bolton finish line. <laughs> wow. 
It has been quite popular, old face app. Uh, it has, yeah. yeah. So uh, we've had a little bit of fun ourselves. And I mean, triathlon can be aging. Working at GTN can be tough. Yeah, I think I've come out quite well from this. Yeah, me maybe not so. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, there have been loads of pros actually getting involved. So yeah. uh, if you've seen any um, and you thought some were particularly funny, then do let us know which ones of those were in the comment section below. Yeah, brilliant. But now on to this week's Caption Comp photo. Uh, this is actually from a race a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know what she's trying to say, but... <laughs> Come on in, the party in the pool, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but do drop your captions in the comment section below. <laughs> oh, I do mean that. <laughs> right, now time to take a look through all the lovely photos that you guys send into us. But to start off, I have a slight apology because last week, my fault, oh, I, what? <laughs> I did the um, the wrong description for the wrong photo. Mm -hmm. um, so this Andy Smith actually contacted us and said, hi guys, really pleased you made a mention of my pain cave here in New Zealand. However, it's the wrong photo. Um, he did say, um, as I was reading out the content, he realized it was his description. He got very excited and then the wrong photo came up. So <laughs> Andy, your pain cave is now on screen. Um, he says he's got a Trek Speed Concept plus a, a giant TCI Advanced Pro. Uh, we keep it simple here in New Zealand. Now we were actually a little bit confused last week because you said, <laughs> We did read this out, it yeah. said a very simple pain cave. And the, the other one wasn't, we'll show you that one in a moment. Certainly wasn't, no. Um, so um, yeah, he's got his, um, what we've got here, we've got a Wahoo kicker on the floor, he's got an EMC2, um, I've not actually come across a bike like that. Um, and yeah, his giant TCR, wheels on the wall, and a few nice winners oh, but, yeah. medals on the and, and he says a fan instead of a TV, so going for the importance of cooling as opposed to entertainment. So it's almost like so. he's looking at the lamp. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like it's, I don't know. The light. light at the end of the tunnel. There, there we, we go. go. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the pain cave that we did feature last week, so having a look at this one now, was originally sent in from Asaf. So, Asaf, sorry for that one, not naming you for your picture, but um, as you said here, it's your old race bike, the Fuji Aloha, permanently on the trainer. That's quite a privilege to be able to have a bike permanently set up. And then the Orbea Orca road bike, Giant Anthem Advance, um, for my 27.5, and the Marine Alpine Series 29. Oh, wow, it's a good selection I like for got, all surfaces. And I like that he's got the giant anthem and the giant trinity in matching colours. Check that oh, out. Oh, wow. Yeah. So then the kit will go, even though you're probably riding, wearing a slightly different kit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as you can see, that is quite an advanced pain cave, so yeah. hence yeah. our confusion last week. <laughs> uh, next one from Jeff, and uh, this is coming from southern Brazil, um, and they said, winter open water swim with the team down here in Brazil. Cheers, GTN. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, I guess we do apologise. We're talking about the very hot weather here mm -hmm. in um, Central Europe and whatnot, the yeah. Northern hem Hemisphere, um, whereas actually some people are going into the winter. Although I would like to point out, <laughs> in the winter here in the UK... We wouldn't be swimming. We wouldn't be swimming, <laughs> even in your thickest wetsuit. Yeah. So I guess it's um, all relative. Yeah, and we're still wearing our wetsuits, even in this heat wave. Yeah. But maybe we're just worth it. Um, but that is an awesome yeah. shot. Really nice to see you, got, you training with all your mates there. Um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and this next one is an action photo sent in from Mike competing at 70.3 in Jonaping um, and says finish with a time of 4.35. Which is a cracking time. Yeah, well, if you go on to say, he says, um, third triathlon since catching the bug in August last year. Now um, to keep training and improving and hopefully achieve a goal of qualifying for Kona in the next couple of years. Well, right. I mean, it depends what age group, but certainly that doesn't sound an unrealistic goal for it that. It certainly looks in shape. Um, um, and with that time after his third triathlon. Yeah. And time for a high five as well. Uh, now, another one from Lars here. Um, and this is, well, a bit of a pack bodge, you decide. Mm, yeah. Um, okay. And he's trying to minimize aero drag on the bike. So he has taken out the laces from his shoes and he has actually replaced them with those, I think they call it speed yeah. locks yeah, things. I can't remember quite. Type um, race, isn't it? Obviously put some electrical tape over the central part to stop them from popping apart, I guess. Yes. And then he's used these Orca aero covers, which I've got a pair of, and they are very good. So Well, I'd love to know how much aero gain you get from sort of taking the laces out and then as opposed to having them under the aero cover. I things, guess it's but. just the speed of getting them on, yeah. I'd imagine, but it's an yeah. interesting look. It's, it is you know, an interesting look. I mean, it's kind of like a fashion that never quite happened, isn't it? <laughs> but I like you, the imagination. You sure. rock it, Lars. You own that. <laughs> 
Um, but final one now is coming in from Philippe, and this is in the Alps, I think. Is that it right? is well, the Ju the Julian Alps oh, in Julian Slovenia. Alps so when I first looked at it, I saw I thought a thought it could have been France and I saw the yellow bike and I thought, oh, it's a bit like Tour de France kind of-esque, but we're in the wrong country. That's that amazing. Fair. I've never yeah. been to the Alpine region of Slovenia. Yeah, so. It looks stunning. Uh, yeah, Merida Road 904, the road to Manga Saddle is the highest paved road in Slovenia, 2,055 meters. Um, the Strava segment has it at roughly 16 kilometers and 1,400 meters of altitude gain. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, I love it. Just not sure about the bottles, not quite matching, but other than that, well. We'll let you go. Tough crowd. <laughs> well, that might be the end of this week's show, but there's still plenty more coming up this week. We've got some exciting videos, and now we're right in the middle of race season. If you are about to do your first open water swim, we've got a video right up the street for you of seven open water tips to start off. Yeah, and if you want to check out one of the fastest female cyclists bikes, um, then you can see Kim Morrison's pro bike, which will be coming up over the weekend. We also have common triathlon training mistakes, which may be helpful to a few of you out there, uh, also coming up this week. Um, but we do have a few great videos that come out over this past week, and one of mm -hmm. which is Patrick Langer versus GTN's very own Fraser. Oh yes, and we've also got, if you're spending lots of time on the bike now in this nice weather and you're getting a bit of back pain, we've got a video to help you out on that one as well. But before you go, make sure you check the link for the GTN shop. We've got some great kits in there, swim caps as well with open water swimming, some nice bright coloured ones. And give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and the globe to subscribe. But you can find the videos that we've talked about just down here.